everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. In the last video, we left off after having painted most of a geode using Kielty alcohol ink and the amazing layering solution, which protects part of a painting, letting you safely wipe off parts you don't like, or layer inks without reactivating previously dried layers. Now, if you haven't watched part one, it's linked above for you now, by the way, and it's full of tips and demonstrations. So really watch that first so that this part makes even more sense. Now, if you're caught up, let's finish a geo, shall we? <laughs> the first thing I decided to do was to give the edge of this painting so far a slightly more, uh, I don't know, uneven look. It seemed a bit too uniform to me. Since most of this painting is sealed with the layering solution, I'm going to use 91% isopropyl alcohol to cut through the layering solution. There's a little bit of water in 91%. That's why it's 91%. And that water is just enough to dissolve the layering solution slowly. And then the ink underneath is going to get cleaned off by the alcohol content of 91% isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> now remember, if I didn't want to disturb the layering solution, I would have to use 99% alcohol. So what I'm doing here is sculpting in some divots for bullseye-like features that geodes have. Once that was done, I made sure to reseal the edge with layering solution so that the next row I paint in doesn't reactivate this really pretty feathery band that I really like. Now it's time to add a couple more rows of color. I pulled out blueberry to start out because it's a light purpley color. My plan here is to give this band a bit of a texture, similar to the pebbly band on the other side of the feathery layer, but maybe a tiny bit more pronounced because I'm going to cover this band with glitter later. Though the glitter is going to be translucent, it does soften details a little bit so I want these details to be a little bit more apparent, enough to easily show through the glitter. So this is a job for my trusty micro brush. <laughs> now if you paint with alcohol inks, add these little guys to your arsenal. They come in super handy for a lot of painting. To get this look, you need a damp, not wet brush. If it's too wet, you just get big blooming blobs instead of these tiny little dots. Once this is done, a quick seal with the layering solution again <laughs> so that I could try out an idea I kind of want to test out. <laughs> now, these words should always scare you. They basically mean that I do not know what I'm about to do and it could be nutty. Uh, but but I but in my head it works, so I, I'm gonna give it a shot. So I I'm grabbing aquamarine now. I'm thinking of adding some aqua dots over the purple ones to give this band a two tone kind of transitional look. Yeah, that should work, right? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I'm liking it. It's different. Yeah. Let's leave that. <laughs> I want to re-emphasize the divots I put in earlier. So with the color I'm going to use for the next band, I'm cleaning up and smoothing out the curves first. It seemed like a good idea in my head, so I'm just doing it. I'll put in the rest of this blue band and then off camera, I put in a purple band too. Well, 
with the purple row in place, I want to now fill in those divots and put in my last row before the rocky exterior. I kind of struggled here a bit because I didn't know how to transition to the exterior in a way that, I don't know, made sense. I tried a simple, smooth, darker purple row first, but I ended up going with a slightly textured purple. And then here you see me cleaning off any excess ink with 99% alcohol. The 99% will wash away everything I no longer need without going through the layering solution. To help me visualize the finished shape of this entire geode, I pulled out brown and gray inks to mix up a warm gray. And then I drew myself the beginnings of the final outer edge, just to sort of map it out for myself. And then after looking at this for a while, I decided that I want a more broken line as the purple edge before we transition to the rock-like outer shell. And since I want tiny little divots for that, I chose a dull knife. This is an old X-Acto with a really dull blade. And I use it for scratching out little details like this. Working out details like this is one of the things I enjoy the most about creating things. I love kind of really bringing pieces to life. Tell me in the comments what you most enjoy when you're making art. Like what, what parts, what steps do you really love taking? With the purple edge done, now I'm going to get to create the outer shell. Now I toyed with a few ideas for this. And I thought maybe using sand or I don't know, sort of, you know, fine gravelly looking stuff. Maybe for another piece I will go that route, but for now I wanted to try doing it just with ink. So with my warm gray and my trusty micro brush, <laughs> I put in lots of varying size dots. Varying how wet the brush is is going to let you accomplish this kind of look. I'll leave it very damp for tiny dots and get it to be a little wetter for slightly larger dots. And for a better variegated look, I add thinned down brown dots. If I had used the brown ink straight out of the bottle, it would have been a little darker than I wanted. So I thinned it down with the blending solution. And then I also added some thin down gray dots. And then to finish off this look here, I added occasional light aqua spots between the outer shell and the dark purple for a slightly realistic touch. I like it. And now, yay! We're ready for glitter, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know I'm pumped up about that. Bling is always fun. <laughs> now, as much as I love me some glitter, <laughs> I'm going to be selective about where I put it. I'm going to use Elizabeth Craft Designs Microfine Glitter for this because it's so fine and will allow me to see the colors underneath. I'm using this cool diamond and it's translucent. I'm going to use Kilty's Retarding Solution as my glue, in a way. I add one drop of this solution to four drops of whatever ink I want, and then I paint with it as I normally would. The Retarding Solution is going to keep my ink from drying completely. It's still going to evaporate at the same original rate, but it will remain softer and sticky to the touch for hours. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, why would I want that? Well, 
sticky ink can hold super fine glitter and it'll hold it beautifully. And it can also hold gold leaf, for example. And if you want to scratch in fine details, that is much easier to do in ink that's still semi-soft than ink that's fully dry. So here you see me applying that solution and ink mix to the areas I want to make be sticky. And with that done, I can easily brush on some glitter. Just like one would brush on blush or powder makeup. This is a wonderfully satisfying step, I gotta tell you. <laughs> it is much nicer than working with glue because it doesn't get onto my brush. And it's a lovely, even, super thin coat that I have hours to play with. If I was using glue, that would dry really quickly and I would get, it would get all lumpy and clumpy as I kept adding more glue. But this stays smooth, flat, thin, and sticky for hours. When I'm done, I knock off the excess and look at how pretty this is. Oh, glitter can make just about anything better. <laughs> but I think we can add a little bit more. So let's mix up some more retarding solution with blue ink and make this area sticky too. In 24 hours, all of this will be 100% dry and the glitter will be permanently attached. If projects like this are fun for you, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to know when I post a new one. And consider becoming a patron on Patreon for even more exclusive videos and demos that I don't post here on YouTube, as well as individual help from me when you need it. Just go to patreon.com slash Miriam's Nature for all the info. Okay, I am loving, loving this glitter. It has a really pretty, elegant look. I love seeing the colors through it too. So, should we stop here? Nah, if you watch my channel enough, you know the answer to that, right? <laughs> Let's do a little bit more. For this step, I want to remove the more temporary ink I'd put here as just a placeholder. I'm going to apply a five minute two-part epoxy and I want it to make direct contact with the tile. That's why I'm removing the ink. I am going to color that epoxy with a pretty micro glitter though, so that I get my color back. It's possible that you can color the epoxy with ink but I've never tried that. But I am certain that adding something dry like glitter is not going to be a problem. Plus, it's super pretty. <laughs> Any chance to add glitter, right? <laughs> okay, so why am I spreading epoxy here? Well, I want to give this core the druzy look that a lot of geodes have at their core. And to achieve that, I'm going to add these teeny tiny crystals. These are meant for the manicure or nail art industry. I've got these in a few colors like this, light blue, aqua -y color. But honestly, using iridescent clear ones would be just as good. Because just like the glitter that I used earlier did, clear crystals will let the colors beneath show through. And these colors, these blue crystals are so pale that you see the aqua beneath coming through too. After sprinkling a layer of these on the epoxy, I sort of tap them down 
to make sure they've made good contact and even sink a little bit into the epoxy. And then for a last step, I brush on a little extra glitter to cover up any gaps between the crystals. Because again, you know, <laughs> a little extra sparkle never hurts. <laughs> and now I can call this done. At some point, I'll add a resin layer to really make all the previous glitter sparkle even more. But I will leave this crystal core exposed, like I won't cover this area with resin, so that this area maintains its druzy texture and it really pops. I'll add a video of doing that resin part on Patreon when it's done. I hope you all got something out of this. Leave a thumbs up to let me know. Make sure to join my Facebook group to see what awesome pieces others are making and to show off what you do too. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Remember, links for everything I used are in the video's description box, as well as options for you to use to help make sure this channel can continue. Helping your creative nature shine is why I do this, because you're my art family. <laughs> I'll see you in a few days. Bye now.